Hi, I'm Kay Adoni, and I'm so happy to be here with you today to talk about PLNs and to present some of the theory and some of the practical tips and strategies that I've learned during my time researching how teachers experience professional learning through personal learning networks. Before we begin, I think it's really important that we talk about defining what a PLN actually is. And this is actually quite tricky. When I conducted my research asking teachers about their experience of professional learning through personal learning networks, I received so many different ideas and descriptions of what a PLN is and what it means to people and how they go about using it. It is a truly personal approach to learning. Alex said that her PLN is not one thing. She can't pin it down. It's not one group of people or a set. And she found it really difficult to understand when people talked about their PLN, what exactly they were describing because her experience of a PLN is something that's constantly changing. Chris says that her PLN is the challenge, that the interaction that gives her new ideas on a daily basis. She says that it's what drives her to continue to grow and learn. And she says that it's like her mental food. Evan was thinking about it in terms of it being a collective brain with less and less barriers. And by that, she means uh, having a global perspective and being able to connect with and use the brains of all of the different people that she knows and has connected with from all over the world. Jazz says that her PLN has changed everything about how she thinks as an educator. And Charlie's quite new to PLNs, but he said that really, when you think about learning through a PLN, the world really is our oyster. Of course, having a group of people and a set of resources that we access uh, to learn and to share and to discuss is nothing new. Teachers have been networking in this way for years. And we didn't actually call it our PLN. It was just the people we knew and the people that we worked with. It wasn't really until about the late 1990s that the term PLN started to be used and started to come up in, uh, in different research and online. Stephen Downs and Clint Lalonde had a blog discussion where they traced the term PLN back to a web article by Tobin in 1998 which was called Building Your Own Personal Learning Network. Now in 1998, there wasn't nearly as much social networking and digital technology accessibility as we have today. And Toby's definition is that a personal learning network is a group of people who can guide your learning, point you to learning opportunities, answer your questions, and give you the benefit of their own knowledge and experience. A PLN today is almost exactly that. However, because we can expand our connections globally and we can connect any time, any place, as long as we have an internet connection, uh, we have a really diverse understanding of who that group of people are that can guide our learning. And so this has changed how we learn and what we learn through a PLN. There have been other definitions of PLNs in the literature. And each one has a similar theme, but different ways of explaining it. For example, Elliot considers a PLN to be a set of resources. And in this set of resources, she includes people, um, both physical and digital. And these sets of resources are your own choice, but they're always available thanks to technology. And they're used for the growth of personal knowledge and skills which are required to thrive in emerging inv information environments. Another definition by Judith Way says that PLNs can be facilitated by technology or conducted face to face and that they can be a combination of both. And in fact, that's what I found from a lot of teachers that I've spoken with is that oftentimes their PLN begins online and then goes offline or begins offline and then moves online is a combination of face-to-face -face and digital conversations and connections. So what we need to remember though is a PLN goes beyond simply connecting with others. Nussbaum Beach reminds us that just because someone might follow a lot of people 
on social media, that doesn't mean they're engaging in worthwhile professional development. In fact, the power of online PLNs comes through the interactions that occur, the connections that are created and the knowledge that is remixed, redesigned and reimagined. While the learner is at the center of their own PLN, they're actually only one part of a much wider network. And this interdependence means that sharing in PLNs is very important. David Wallet captures the active nature of PLNs when he says that learners become amplifiers as they engage in reflective and knowledge building activities. They connect and reconnect what they learn. They add value to existing knowledge and ideas, and then they reissue those back into the network to be captured by others. So it's this idea of constant cycling and remixing of ideas and knowledge and information never staying still and constantly changing all of the time that typifies a PLN. What I'm going to share with you today is some of the theory that I have learned about during my research and some practical ways of thinking about PLNs. So let's start by breaking down the term personal learning network into personal learning and network. P in PLN may stand for many things. Often it stands for professional to describe the type of learning that's taking place in the network. I've also seen it being used to stand for passionate because a personal learning network or a passionate learning network is all about what you are passionate about and what you would like to learn and know. I like to use the term personal because I feel that this describes how learning through a PLN is an autonomous experience. Every PLN is created by an autonomous individual who drives their own learning according to their interests, passions and learning needs. This is the paradox of the PLN. It's based upon social learning, but the learning is driven by the individual. As Stephen Downs says in his description of network learning, the learner operates independently, but not without input from others. It's this independence which allows the diverse responses which create a rich learning environment. Moving on to the L in PLN, let's talk about learning. The type of learning that occurs through a PLN is social learning. It acknowledges that we've created far too much information for any one person to hold in their head at one time. Engaging with social learning means we're acknowledging that our own cognitive capacity is limited in comparison to the amount of information and content that is available to us. With information and knowledge multiplying at a crazy rate, theories such as network learning and connectivism have evolved to explain how connections between people and information sources might create opportunities for knowledge construction. Connected learning offers us a pedagogical framework which has been designed around network learning and connectivism and the PLN draws upon these understandings of learning and knowledge. This table provides a summary of the shared features of network learning, connectivism and connected learning that underpin learning through a PLN. When we engage with learning through a PLN, we're acknowledging that the knowledge is distributed and socially constructed. What this means is that knowledge can be held by many different people and also if you believe the constructivist theory held within non-human appliances such as computers. And it's more important that we know how to find this knowledge and information when we need it than it is for us to carry this knowledge around in our head all the time. The capacity to create connections and to effectively search for and filter large amounts of information is a much more important skill than simple memorization. Learning, therefore, is an active process of creating connections and seeing patterns of information within and between these connections. The learner decides what they want to know and they navigate their network in order to seek the connections and sources that will provide the information they use to construct this knowledge. In a personal learning network, we've already discussed how the learner is autonomous 
and they're driven by their own goals. And the social software is what enables this individual person to create the connections and to build spaces for this learning to happen in.